Hey everyone, I'm in the Hobart Mills area. This is off of Highway 89, just north of Trucking. We've got a really exciting adventure they're going to take you on today. We're going to travel some roads around. It's called the Bear Valley Loop, and we're going to head out north toward Loyalton. That's the far point, and then we're going to come back. Now, I'm going to be riding a bicycle today, but you can drive this as well. It's kind of a four-wheel drive road, but you can get away with like a Subaru or a RAV4 or something with moderate clearance. So it's not a difficult road, so you can drive it or you can ride it on a bike. The best bike for this route is probably a gravel bike or a hardtail. If you have a full squishy, that's fine. It's about 50 miles, and it's just incredible views. It's not really technical. It's mostly smooth fire roads. There are some rougher spots, but they're not bad. So it's a really fun route to do if you're not looking for a technical single track. And I've got a surprise for you about two-thirds of the way through. There's a detour that we can take. We're not going to take it today, but I'm going to tell you about it. And if you're in a car, you probably want to do it. It's really exciting. So come on, let's go and check it out. We start off in this logging area, but don't worry, we get through here pretty quick. This is right at the beginning of the Hobart Mills Road. We're going to turn left and get on the fire road here very shortly. All right, we're less than half a mile in, and then we're going to scoot off the paved road here. And we'll return on that paved road, but now we're uh, going to start the gravel route. Really nice single track with a meadow on the right. I should point out that this very first part that I've taken on the bike is not drivable. So what you need to do instead, if you're driving, is just jump on 89. We're only 0.7 miles in, and rather than taking the route I did, you'll go up 89, you'll turn left on this road in front of me. And this road is a left turn about a half a mile past the Hobart Mills staging area. So if you're driving, you'll just come up 89 and take this left. If you are driving, you should not turn right at Hobart Mills right here, because there's a short section of dirt that we do where cars are not allowed. So instead, if you're driving, you're gonna drive past Hobart Mills about a half a mile and I'm going to show you the left turn that you need to make. Okay, you see that intersection sign on your right, and then shortly after, it's a four-way. And if you look on the right, you'll see the dirt where we come out. But we are going to turn left. There's a sign right on the left there. It says Hobart Work Center. So this is where you begin the dirt route if you are driving. You see a road closed sign, and then you want to take a right here. After you take the right, you're going to see a sign that says that two-wheel drive automobiles are not recommended. So that's what I was talking about before. If you have anything with high clearance and all-wheel drive, you should be okay. But a two-wheel drive passenger car, mm, maybe not. Okay, so we're on the north side of Highway 89, and we're just cruising along on this relatively smooth fire road through the forest. It's an easy cruise at this point, and we're going to head toward the Jackson Meadow Road. Okay, we got a moderate downhill here. It's not very steep, but there's a fork in the road, and we're gonna head right here. And this is at about 3.1 miles. Okay, at about three and a half miles, we come to a creek and a bridge. This is Sage Hen Creek. And then following the creek, we've got a pretty stiff uphill, but it's not too bad. Here's the uphill. It's a little bit rocky, a little bit rough, a little bit steep, but nothing that can't be done on the gravel bike. Okay, we are at mile 4.3 and there's kind of a major junction here. And the sign over there says Sage Hen Campground, four miles. So you can go out that way and camp. We're gonna stay right and head up this thing. We're near the top of the hill. All right, so we're about 10.3 miles in. We're getting close to Jackson Meadow. And here's another creek. And this is Independence Creek that we're crossing. Looks like the other one, a little pool on the right side and kind of brushy on the left side. To our left there, we could see the road to Independence Lake. It's three miles and it's, it says it's Sierra 350 County Road. However, we are going to continue in this direction. Okay, we're almost to Jackson Meadow Road. We're gonna cross the creek here. And then we're gonna cross 89 and head from the north side to the south side. And the river we just crossed is the Little Truckee River. As you can see, it was pretty large, so it's not a creek at all. It's a little touchy river. Okay, so we were paralleling Highway 89 as we were heading north on the west side of the road. And now we come out to what I normally call Jackson Meadow Road. Weber Lake is behind me that way. But my map says this is the fiberboard road. So I'm not sure which is the correct nomenclature, but either way, we are on this for just a short distance, and then we're going to cross 89. All right, so here we are coming out on Highway 89, and we're just going to go straight across. 
Okay, after we cross Highway 89, I believe that we are now on Bear Valley Road. And there's another road back here called Cottonwood Road. And I think this maybe turns into Cottonwood and then we're back on Bear Valley. I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. This is where the ride starts getting a lot more pretty and a lot more open. So we have much better views and there's a lot of meadows and it's just really nice. Okay, we're about 17 miles in and this is where Bear Valley Road kind of kicks up for a bit and it opens up and then we crest out and we have a gorgeous long downhill and the incredible views start. All right, around here it starts opening up a little bit and it gets really pretty. All right, guys. All is good. Whoopsie. You're all right. You're all right, buddy. All right, a few cows, now we're down in the valley here. There's this massive old culvert. I don't know what that's about. It's probably pulled out of somewhere and then just kind of kept here. I do have somebody at the other end watching them. I'm gonna let them know you're coming down. Just keep your eyes open. Um, and if they're working close to the road, I'd just stop. And then they, you know, they'll probably stop and let you by, so. So is masticator, is that like a tiger mower or something? Or? It's a, well, it's a big cat excavator with an arm on tracks. And uh -huh. then they have the, the spinning chains at the end of it with the cutters. Oh. So what we're doing, a big strip up here is a fire break. Okay. Yeah, it's a big, it might be going on all summer if we can get the funding from Washington. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How far have you come today? Well, I start from Hobart. Okay. And then you can just cross the uh, 89, go on the, along the road on the north side to Jackson Meadow. And then I uh -huh. just came across the road. And now I'll just head back past Prosser and back to Hobart. It's a good ride. Well, it's about 50 miles. Good for you. Well yeah. done. Okay, man. Okay, I'll let Take you know you're coming down. Thank you so much. All right, so we gotta watch out for the masticator. All right, there's the masticator right there. Cool. I'm good. Thanks a lot, appreciate it. You guys have a great day. Okay, you can see along the right side here where they've done their work and they're just widening it. A little bit on the left side too. It says just to keep the idiots from smoking cigarettes and throwing stuff out the window. Well, I won't stop if I'm doing that, but it might stop a fire. All right, so now we come down here, you see we get the, this humongous view. It's one of the nicest things about this ride. Okay, about mile 25, 
walking back on the pavement. We're in uh, kind of the outskirts of Loyalton. And it is possible to head into Loyalton, get some food and drink if you like. Otherwise, you can just carry on and then stop at the picnic area where I'm going to stop up here. All right, we come to this road here. It's called Smith Neck Road. This is the one that's going to take us back. If we look down this way, we're looking into the kind of the town of Loyalton. However, we're heading out of town. I'm going to stop at the park right up here. Well, it says private campground, but I think this is where I stopped before. Kind of closed off, but you can get through on a bike. Got dogs barking next door. I didn't realize it, but apparently it's an abandoned campground. There's a bathroom here. It's closed. And picnic table. So I'm just going to sit down, have a little lunch. All right, so this seems like a good place as any to uh, enjoy my sandwich. So that's what I'm going to do. And then we're going to carry on. Head up the hill and there's an old historic uh, logging place, I think it is. But anyway, the train used to go up there. So we're going to check that out. It's super dry and dusty today and my chain's kind of complaining. I'm going to give it a wipe and a lube and see if that helps things out a bit. Also, the table's creaking a bit. Let's see if this helps. All right, so the paved road eventually turns to gravel and then it's a long slog up to the summit where the uh, historic lumber mill was. So the grade is pretty gradual and the gravel is good, so it's just kind of a grind. And then we'll check out the lumber mill and then we've got a descent. All right, so I'm at the Lewis Mill here and this is uh, kind of a remote area where the mill was. And there's a bunch of old historic photos and the site is right in front of me, but there's not much to see because of course everything was either dismantled or it has burned down. Here's some information about the railroad. First they used these steam donkeys and then later they built this railroad up here. And the reason the grade that I came up was so steady and mellow is it was the former railroad grade because they built a railroad from Loyalton to Boca. I think it was dismantled in about, I think that was in about 1900 and it was dismantled in about 1916, 1917 when the uh, rail was built down the Feather River Canyon. So that kind of replaced this railroad and it was it was obsolete, but it was a great option for hauling logs for a while. And here's some information about the Lewis Mill site. You can pause or scroll or whatever. Read that. Good old boys there. And then here's some history. circa 1905. This is hauling logs before the railroad and before the steam donkeys, I guess. Here we are in this beautiful meadow at the top of the climb on the Smith Neck Road. So this is a sort of a summit meadow. And after this, we'll be heading down the hill over towards Stampede Reservoir. This is the descent off the Smith Neck Road. I'm going to turn off the main road here to go check out this valley. It's absolutely gorgeous. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is called the Dog Valley. It's absolutely huge. So we've come down the hill from the peak of the Smith Neck Road. And now we're down into the valley. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. All right, so we're coming along the south part of Dog Valley here. It's just an absolutely gorgeous 
And coming up is going to be the little surprise add-on that I wanted to mention. So stay tuned for that. All right, folks, we are at the south end of the valley. There's a continuation of the road that we're heading down, and there's where we came from. But behind me, right here, is Hennes Pass Road. And if you go up this road, you're gonna end up on Sardine Peak. You can climb Sardine Peak. And at the top of Sardine Peak is this amazing lookout. So it's definitely a worthwhile detour. If you're driving, for sure do it. Um, if you're riding, then you're gonna to want to be a very strong rider because it's a pretty big climb and you've already got a 50 mile loop that we're doing. So for me, the 50 miles is plenty, but if you've got the energy to get up there, you wanna go up some other time, then it's certainly worth it. It's a great view up there. And uh, the Bike Monkey Truckee Gravel Race actually heads up to Sardine, or towards Sardine Peak, but it actually doesn't go up to the lookout. I think you can drive most of the way. There might be a gate at the top where you have to walk for a bit, but it's definitely a walkable distance. We're going to take that right turn to Stampede Reservoir in about a mile. Yeah, there's another sign that says we take a right here. And I think we're back on pavement. And this will take us over to Stampede Reservoir. This is a downhill right turn on Stampede. I think it's Dog Valley Road maybe. But it heads to Stampede. It's on a downhill so it's easy to miss. So you definitely do not want to miss that. Make sure you head for Stampede Reservoir because that'll take you back toward Hobart Mills where we want to go. Okay, we stay on Dog Valley Road after Stampede Reservoir, and then we turn right on Hobart Mills Road. And this road is gonna take us all the way back to the staging area. Well, folks, it looks like we're back at the rock and gravel piles here. And if you did like the video, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching.